Apple's new A15 chip has been causing a lot of confusion because this year they decided not to compare it to the previous A14 during their recent event, causing a lot of people to believe that there are barely improvements at all this year. So I ended up watching some of the other takes on YouTube about what in the world is going on with the A15 and what it means for future chips like the M1X and the M2, and I think a lot of those other takes are missing some important details. But thankfully, reviews of the iPhone 13 just came out and we obviously got a massive improvement, at least with the 5 core GPU version of the 13 Pro, giving us as much as 14,437 metal graphics points, which is much faster than the A14 chip in the iPhone 12. So I've been doing a bit of research and I think I've actually figured out exactly what the A15 chip is based on, which confirms many of my other theories on the upcoming M1X chip and the future M2 chip. So before I get into explaining my theory, I want to point out a couple of very important details that I found about the A15 chip's performance benchmarks that led to this discovery. Like I said before, the 5-core GPU version of the A15 was able to score a huge improvement over the A14 and Mr. Who's the Boss's recent tests. However, the 4-core GPU version of the A15 scored around 10,875 points, which is very interesting because it's the same 4-core GPU layout as the A14, showing that there's around a 16% improvement due to having faster or better cores. Now this brought me to a very interesting article by the Apple Tree on Twitter who examined the leaked benchmarks that came out a few days ago before these reviews were out, and he came up with some awesome conclusions. He looked at the CPU benchmarks and saw that the A15 scores around 1720 in the single core test, which is around a 10% gain versus the A14 chip, which scored around 1570 points. However, the leaked benchmarks for the multi-core performance show a score of around 4,600 compared to 3,800 for the A14, which is around an 18 to 19% improvement. Now this doesn't really make sense because the six core layout of the chip stayed the same this year. And the only explanation is that the efficiency cores themselves have gotten more powerful in the A15. The Apple tree did some calculations and found that with the old A14 chip, the efficiency core combined score around 700 points, so he applied the same math to the leaked A15 multi-core score of 4600, and he concluded that the efficiency cores should now score around 1150 points by themselves, being around 60% faster year over year. And this is going to give us a major benefit. If the efficiency cores are faster, this means that they can handle more tasks by themselves without the performance cores having to turn on at all, which is going to lead to major battery life improvements. Now with that said, let's finally get into the important realization that brings me to my new theory on the A15. The newly revealed single core benchmarks for the A15 chip show a score of around 1740 points with a performance core running at 3.23 GHz clock speed. And then I realized that this number seems very familiar, so I looked at the benchmarks of the M1 MacBooks, which scored around 1714 to 1721 points at a 3.2 GHz clock speed, which is almost identical. So here is my crazy theory. What if Apple took the performance cores from the M1 chip, tweak them up a bit by increasing the clock speed by 0.03 gigahertz and then tossed those cores into the A15 chip alongside some other changes like doubling the system cache in the SOC. That would actually explain why the single core performance is just a tad bit faster on the A15 than on the M1. And if you really think about it, the M1 cores are really just tweaked versions of the A14 cores. Now you might be saying, how is it possible for Apple to throw those insanely powerful performance cores into the iPhone? Because obviously it's a much smaller device, so it heats up much more than a MacBook. Well, unlike the M1 chip, the A15 is built on TSMC's 5 nanometer plus architecture, so it's more efficient and it doesn't heat up as much. But then there's also the question of why Apple would reuse the 
the M1 performance cores in the first place instead of redesigning brand new, entirely different performance cores. Well, if you didn't already know, for the past decade or so, Apple's ARM cores have been based on the ARM V8 architecture, and earlier this year, ARM has already announced ARM V9 with some massive improvements, which Apple will definitely take advantage of. But the downside is that it won't be ready to launch until next year. So if you're in Apple's shoes, why would you spend time reading designing the performance cores if you're about to totally switch to the new ARM V9 architecture. By far, the easiest solution is to just take those same M1 cores, tweak them up a little bit, and then toss them into the A15 chip alongside some other new components, which I'm going to talk about in just a second. And to test this theory out, I ended up crunching a bunch of numbers to see if everything matches up, and spoiler alert, it does. So let's get right into that. First off, as we know, the M1 chip scores around 7,500 points in Geekbench 5's multi-core test compared to the A15 chip's maximum score of 4,874 in Mr. Who's the Boss's video. We also know that the M1 chip uses an 8-core layout compared to 6 on the A15. So the M1 essentially has two extra performance cores. We also know that the M1 chip's efficiency cores combined add around 700 points to the multi-core test, due to previous calculations we made when we studied the M1 chip. So if I grab the 7500 multi-core score that we got with our M1 MacBooks, and then minus 700 from the efficiency cores, we're left with a score of 6,800 points between the M1's four performance cores. Now divide that by four, and you get around 1,700 points per performance core. So now, with that said, let's try to recreate the A15 chip's six core layout, which includes two performance cores and four efficiency cores, and see if it matches up to the new iPhone 13 Pro Max's score of 4,874. First, we take the 1,700 points and multiply it by two performance cores, giving us 3,400 points. Now, if we add in the 700 points from the M1's four efficiency cores, we have a new score of 4,100, which is definitely shy 774 points. However, we're forgetting the most important detail. According to the apple tree, the efficiency cores this year are much faster. So if we look at the multi-core score of the 13 Pro Max, and we minus out the performance from the two performance cores, we're left with 1,376 points, which are from the efficiency cores alone. So if we go back and take the 3,400 points that we got from the M1 chip's performance cores, and then add 1,376 points instead of 700, we get a total multi-core score of 4,776 points, which is within a margin of error from the A15 chip score that Mr. Who's the Boss showed us on the iPhone 13 Pro Max. But wait, it gets even better because I did the same thing for the GPU cores as well. When we benchmarked our M1 MacBook Pro with the 8-core GPU, it scored as much as 22,000 points in Geekbench 5's metal test. And as we know, the A15 chip comes with either a 4-core or a 5-core GPU. So I took the 22,000 points from the M1 and divided it by 8 to get 2,750 points per GPU core. And if we multiply that number by 4 cores, we get 11,000 metal points, which almost perfectly matches the metal score in the regular iPhone 13's 4-core GPU version of the A15 chip. And then if we apply that same math to the 5-core version of the A15, we get a score of around 13,750 points, which is still shy of the 14,400 points from the new 5-core version's benchmarks. However, if we go back to the Apple Tree's article, he pointed out that the GPU cores in the 5-core version of the A15 are actually clocked slightly higher than the ones in the 4-core version, which would account for the extra difference that we see with the iPhone 13 Pro Max. But either way, the point that I'm trying to make is that these scores in the A15 chip are matching up so closely that we can basically confirm that the A15 is almost certainly using tweaked and improved versions of the M1's CPU and GPU cores 
with the biggest difference being the much faster efficiency cores. Now, I'm not trying to say that Apple just took the M1 cores and threw them into the A15, because obviously the efficiency cores are much faster, and the GPU cores are clocked slightly higher on the 5-core GPU version of the A15, but they're close enough that we can assume Apple just tweaked up the cores from the A14 and the M1. And if you really think about it, Apple going with this approach of tweaking the cores saves them a ton of engineering cost. Having the A14, the M1, and A15 chips all using basically the same fundamental cores but with different tweaks to each one. And if you think I'm crazy, I can actually prove this by examining the latest iPad Air's A14 chip, which uses the same four core GPU layout as the lower end four core A15 chip. Surprisingly, it actually scores as much as 12,500 metal points in Geekbench 5, which is higher than the 10,875 points that the iPhone 13's newer A15 chip is getting. So somehow, last year's four core A14 chip is outperforming the new four core A15 chip, which doesn't seem to make any sense at all. But the truth is that they're fundamentally the same cores, but Apple just went all out with the performance in the iPad Air, and they ended up toning down the performance in the new iPhone 13 because it's a much smaller device that doesn't handle heat as well. But making things even more interesting, if you take that 12,500 graphics score from the iPad Air and then double it to match the eight GPU cores in the M1 chip, it should score around 25,000 metal points. But for some reason, the M1 iPad Pro and the other M1 Max only score up to around 22,000, which means that Apple tuned down the performance lower than what the chips are technically capable of due to heat management. But with that said, getting back to the A15 chip, of course we know it's technically a newly designed chip because it comes with new features like a new image signal processor, a new display engine, double the system cache, a new neural engine that's much faster than before, and new video encoders and decoders. But it seems like Apple combined whatever new components they had with the tweaked versions of the A14 cores to create the A15 chip design, including the new super fast efficiency cores. And with that theory explained, now let me get into how this perfectly matches up to rumors of the M1 chip. Mark Gurman believes that the M1 chip will come with a new 10 core layout with eight performance cores instead of four on the M1, but just two efficiency cores instead of the previous four. And if you think it's weird for Apple to ditch two of the efficiency cores because it seems like the battery life is at risk, Remember that the new ones in the A15 chip are much faster, and we're expecting those same faster efficiency cores to show up in the M1X chip. And those faster efficiency cores are gonna be able to handle more tasks by themselves without having to turn on the performance cores, and that is gonna save more battery life. So with that said, everything points to the M1X chip being based on the cores from the M1 and A15 chips. And if this is true, here are some conservative estimates for the performance I'm expecting from the M1X. And on top of that, Apple is gonna include the new much faster 16 core neural engine from the A15 chip into the M1X, along with anything else that might be new from the A15 and then adding on Mac exclusive updates like changes to the Thunderbolt controller to allow more ports and display outputs. Now, as far as the future M2 chip, I personally believe that it's gonna be coming next year and it's gonna debut with the M2 redesigned MacBook Air. The biggest piece of evidence for this conclusion is an article from Mark Gurman claiming that the redesigned MacBook Air would come with an M2 chip that features the same amount of CPU cores as the M1, but with two additional GPU cores. And since Apple is gonna be releasing the M1X MacBook Pros within the next two months, it doesn't make sense for the new MacBook Air to come until next year. And according to Min Chi Kuo, this new MacBook Air is launching in mid 2022, which perfectly lines up with Apple's WWDC event in June, which would actually be the perfect event to reveal the M2 chip since it's gonna be two years since 
since Apple announced the Apple Silicon transition. I also personally expect the M2 chip to come with brand new redesigned cores based on the new ARM v9 architecture and potentially be built on a newer 4 nanometer process node from TSMC. And then I expect those exact cores to be going into the A16 chip for the iPhone lineup. So there you guys go. Those were all of my conclusions on how Apple created the A15 chip and how it's actually based on the same cores as the M1 chip with some added improvements like the faster neural engine and other tweaks like that. And if you totally disagree with me, then let me know down in the comment section below. But if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and click the circle buff to subscribe for more videos like this one and watch one of those two right over there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.